I should state that this was a few years ago, and I'm a tiny woman. Back at this time, I look like a teenager, so I've always been mindful that I seem an easy target or easier to fool. I had seen a job interview for a small business looking for a secretary. No experience needed as they would provide on-the-job training, and as that's the kind of thing I was looking for, I applied. I heard back quickly and was invited to an interview. When I arrived, I was excited. It was a bit of a journey from my home, but it was in a beautiful old building on the third floor with a modern layout inside, though you could tell it was very new as it was bare bones and very little had been unpacked. Still though, if you have to work somewhere, might as well be a nice building, right? Anyway, the interview seemed normal. I only encountered female members of staff and they were all warm and lovely. The woman interviewing me was amazing and even sat talking to me for a while after getting to know me. When I get home, I wasn't in the door long before I get a phone call from them. I nailed the interview. Awesome, I thought, and I was offered the job. I was about to accept when I was told on the phone, Okay, you'll come here tomorrow and we'll have the van drive you to where you'll be working. And I was like, what? Confused about what they meant. They then told me that I'd be meeting with customers on their behalf and talking and selling stuff. I was not comfortable with this as it wasn't what I was interviewed for, but I gave them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they had a second position that they thought I'd fit in better with. It wouldn't be that weird as a new company and, while not what I was comfortable with, I should hear them out. So I asked more questions and the woman on the other end of the line is getting more snippy and tense. Gone was the nice friendly woman from earlier and she would not reveal where I would be going or who I would be meeting with. By this point, plenty of red flags were going off, so I had to decline the offer pretty quick. For anyone curious as to what had happened, I reported this as it seemed very dodgy. But when they were checked in on, the floor was no longer occupied by them. They'd apparently just rented it for a week and were gone. When I was 11, almost 12, the woman living above me was a coke dealer. The night of my 12th birthday, she went missing. Not long after, her boyfriend came down to ask if he could use our phone. This was 2004, so having a cell phone was more of an exception than a rule, at least in my area. For a little context, I was home alone at the time while my mom was at work about a five minute walk away. My mom had let our neighbor and her boyfriend come in to use our phone several other times before, so I assumed nothing was wrong with it and let him in, bringing him into the living room, which is towards the front of our apartment to use the phone in there. He picks up the receiver, dials a number, waits a few seconds, then hangs up the phone. He does this a couple of more times before the front door of the building opens. You can easily hear the front door open from where we are. It's a very heavy door. The walls are thin, and the way our building is set up, it's a small, old, single-family house converted into apartments. My and my mom's apartment was the only one on the first floor, and our upstairs neighbor's apartment was the only one above us. Irrelevant, but there was also a much smaller apartment below us. My neighbor's boyfriend looked at me, put his pointer finger to his lips like he was trying to shush me, and told me not to tell anyone he was there before speed-walking to my room at the other end of the apartment. I watched my bedroom door close right before there was a loud, hard, cop-like knock on the door. My jaw dropped as I opened the door to see a police officer. He asked if my neighbor's boyfriend was there and being scared, I stammered out, y Yeah, he just went into my room. The officer asked if he could come in, which I agreed to, and as he was coming in, he asked if he could let his partner in the back door and lead them to my room. We walked together to the back of the apartment and I let his partner in. The back door to the apartment was right next to my bedroom door, but we had to walk around the kitchen table to get there. There was just barely enough space between the two doors to fit a narrow rectangular table against it without blocking the path to either door. As I let them into my room, I watched as they pulled my neighbor's boyfriend out of my bedroom closet. As they brought him out of my room and towards the back door, which just led to an enclosed fire escape, they told me to go wait in the living room while they brought him out the back door. I walked back to the living room and after they closed the door I could hear what they were saying and 
I could hear the distinct sound of metal clicking and quickly realizing that he had been handcuffed. Still scared, I waited for the police car to drive away before grabbing my keys, making sure that the back door was locked and locking the front door on my way out before running to my mom's work, crying. Pretty sure I cut the five minute trip into about two minutes and I've never been a fast runner. I was fueled entirely on adrenaline and fear at that point and I just wanted my mom. When I told her what had happened, my mom was so angry that he had used me the way he had, hiding out in a child's bedroom closet of all places to try to keep the cops from finding him. She gave me a short but gentle lecture that night about not letting people in to use the phone, telling me that I was not to let people use our phone even if I knew them unless she was home. I don't want to know what exactly he was wanted for, nor do I want to know what would happen if the cops had not shown up. I don't know if he had known that the cops were on their way and had come to my apartment specifically to hide from them or if he was up to something else and knew it was the cops when the front door of the building was opened. It was probably only after my close call that my mind really started to run away with what could have happened were it not for my dog. I'm a 26 year old female, I live with my fiance, my two cats and my dog Rowan. Our house is literally less than a minute away from a huge farmer's field that is frequented by many dog walkers at all times of the day. Me and my significant other often take turns walking Rowan around the field throughout the day. It was only around 7.30pm and it was still really bright and sunny. Rowan was letting me know it was time to go for a walk so while my partner was tinkering in the garage, I grabbed his lead and headed to the field. Let me quickly tell you about Rowan. He's a two-year-old Rottweiler who is very loving and playful, if a little daft, but would not hurt a fly, not a bad bone in his body. He's also extremely well trained. We made sure to put the effort in as he's a big dog breed with a bad rep so wanted to make a point of not feeding stereotypes. I'm very much of the opinion of there's no bad dogs, just bad owners. Unfortunately, we've had some run-ins with some not-so-good owners, so Rowan gets a little nervous when meeting new dogs and people, but we're working on it. Now back to the story. We're walking around the farmer's field. Rowan is off sniffing and peeing on every blade of grass in sight. I always keep an eye out for other walkers anyway due to Rowan being a little nervous, and I clocked a guy on his own walking down the path towards me fairly far away. At first I thought nothing of it, as plenty of people walk this route without dogs, we were just coming out of lockdown in the UK. As the guy got closer, I noticed he was in a full tracksuit with the hood up, which was odd as it was like 23 degrees, so shorts and a t-shirt weather. He then took a small path off the field leading through some bushes. It was a public made shortcut rather than an official public footpath, but it was well enough used so I kept walking, thinking nothing of it. At about 15 meters away from the path he took, Rowan shot back to my side immediately dropping the mouthful of dirt he had been pretending not to eat. He's not the smartest. I pat him and noticed he was standing super alert staring at the path entrance. When I looked up I caught a glimpse of the man peeking around the edge of the bushes that concealed the entrance. I stopped dead in my tracks and Rowan's fur stood on end as he positioned himself in front of me. It took me a second to realize that this man had been watching and waiting in the bushes for me to approach. My current route would have meant that I'd be walking right by the path opening. My stomach dropped as I realized we were the only ones around on that field. I had this weird moment where I was almost trying to convince myself that I was overreacting, but then the guy whistled. Not a wolf whistle, but as if to try and get my dog to come to him. Rowan was having none of that, though, and I definitely took that as my cue to trust my stranger danger instincts. I immediately turned and sped walk back the way we came, simultaneously pulling my phone out and dialing my partner's number. I ended up having to clip on Rowan's lead on to get him to walk with me, and he was not taking his eyes away from the path. He was even growling a little, which was so out of character and put me on edge even more. I glanced back, and the man had edged slightly out of the bushes, watching me walk away. My partner answered the phone after a few rings. I was only halfway through stammering out the story and he was already sprinting up the field to meet me telling me to stay on the phone but to keep an eye on the man. The man in the tracksuit now fully came out of the bushes and just stood staring at me, walking away. 
I dared a quick look away from him towards the entrance to the field to see my fiancé jogging towards me. He was relieved I was okay, but was also immediately pointing and shouting, Is that him? Clearly furious at what this man might have had in his mind had Rowan not picked up on him hiding in the bushes. I eventually convinced my fiancé not to confront him as he was still stood staring, almost taunting us. You never know what people might be capable of or have concealed. We came off of the field and took Rowan on a different walk, which he was more than happy about. I've never been so proud of him for stepping up and protecting me. Safe to say, he got plenty of treats and fussing when we got home. So I work for a very major retailer you've all heard of. This was from a year and a half or so ago back when I worked in the electronics and photo departments. One afternoon I answered the phone and spoke to a customer. He wasn't very direct about what exactly he was looking for. At first he said he was looking for a gift for a family member that he hated. He said it wanted it to be something that they would accept because of the obligation but would absolutely hate. I asked if he was looking for a type of gag gift and he dodged my question. Instead, he started asking me what I would buy if I wanted to get a gift for a family member like that. I said I wasn't sure, but maybe a movie or some music they didn't like would be a good choice. Then he surprised me by asking what type of movies I liked watching. I said it wasn't anything that would really fit what he was looking for as I usually watch anime. Next he asked if that was something I'd want to watch over dinner. I said I certainly do watch it while I eat dinner sometimes, not knowing where he was going with this. Then he said, no, I meant with me. I laughed nervously and told him no. Then I quickly changed the subject back to what he was looking for and asked if we had a certain TV series in stock. I told him I'd go check. By this point, I was feeling pretty uncomfortable, but I wanted to keep my customer service and not disappoint the customer by being rude. So I found what he was looking for and then told him the price and how many copies were in stock. After this, he asked me some other question about myself, and I told him that perhaps I wasn't the best person to help him, so I handed the phone off to a male co-worker. I walked away from the desk at that point and made my way back to the photo department, where I felt safer as I wasn't in the direct view of customers who were walking around. I took a moment to collect myself before I left. The next part was of my coworker's interaction with a customer on the phone. My coworker introduced himself in the usual manner and asked how he could help. The man said, Oh man, where did that cute bubbly girl go? My coworker replied with an improvised response of, Oh, uh, she's actually our photo associate. She doesn't know as much about electronics. To which the customer responded, Oh. I'd like to see some pictures of her without clothes on. To which my coworker did not know how to respond. The customer then said it would be easier to just shop in person, that he'd be back later to see me, and hung up. I asked my coworker if he was able to ever get the customer off the phone. He told me what the customer had said, and I felt literally sick. I was also so terrified of coming into contact with this customer that I went to management and reported the issue to them. They just chuckled and said that there wasn't anything they could do as it was likely just a prank caller. I was worried about spending any time on the sales floor, but I still had to complete my shift. That evening, I was terrified. I politely asked a male co-worker to walk me to my car. He obliged, and thankfully we saw no trace of the creepy guy anywhere. And we've never heard from him ever since then. I was an 18-year-old female when this incident occurred. I was in the first year of university. I was walking to one of my classes when I then saw a man walking towards me. There was nothing really too off-putting about his appearance. He was tall and slightly large and he looked to be in his 40s. He was also wearing a shirt with my school's logo on it. The same shirt that the service workers wore. I noticed that he was staring at me. I stared back at him to try and make him look away, but he didn't. He continued to walk towards me and held eye contact till he passed me. I didn't really think too much of this. 
Over the next few months, I had saw him around campus several times, and the same thing would always happen. He would always stare at me until he walked past me, but he never once said a word. On one occasion, I had saw him in the basement of my building while I was doing laundry. Once again, he walked past me without saying anything. Although he really made me feel a bit uneasy, I didn't let it bother me too much and just kind of assumed that maybe he just had something off about him. This continued for a couple of months before anything disturbing happened. On one night, my roommate was asleep and I needed to clear my head, so I slipped on my shoes and coat and then headed out for a smoke. Now, my university's campus was smoke-free, so I walked around to the back of my building and then lit a cigarette. I had heard some rustling coming from further away, still around the building but kind of in a spot where I couldn't see it. I didn't get too worried though as the back of my building faced the woods and we're kind of used to seeing deer and other small animals around the campus. Still though, I was really curious. I quietly walked over and looked around the corner. I was surprised to see a man standing there looking right up at my building. I started to squint my eyes and that's when I realized that it was the same man who was always staring at me. What was he doing? His hands were in his pockets and he seemed to just be staring right up at the windows. I felt a little uneasy as that's when I realized that he was staring at the general area of my own window, but I couldn't tell for sure what he was looking at. I didn't want him to see me so I quietly finished my cigarette and flicked it onto the ground. I crushed the cigarette into the ground with my shoe and then headed back to my room. I had then took a really quick shower and slipped on some PJs. I tried to fall asleep that night, but I just couldn't get that man out of my head. Why was he just staring at the building? Was he really looking into my window? After a few minutes of wrestling with my thoughts, I decided that my questions really needed answers. So I quietly got up and tiptoed across my room to the window. I looked out the window, and sure enough, the man was staring at me. When he noticed me staring back, I honestly expected him to walk away. But he didn't. He just continued to stare at me. I started to feel kind of sick at this point. Should I call someone? I mean, I guess he wasn't technically doing anything wrong. So I decided I would just leave it. He couldn't do anything to harm me. My door was always kept locked and there was no way he could fit through my window. It was on the third floor and it was extremely tiny. I crawled back into bed and went to sleep. About two months had passed since this incident, and I hadn't seen the man since. I was hoping that maybe he had quit or maybe he had been fired, but I wasn't so lucky. One day I came back from class to then find my roommate standing in the lobby of my building, and she had two police officers standing with her. When she saw me, she had then grasped and ran right towards me, then hugging me. She was visibly really shaken, and she seemed really scared about something. I asked her what was going on and before she could even answer me, a police officer then approached me. He then asked me to confirm my name and room number. I told him and he then showed me a picture of the man. It was the same exact man that had been standing out my building two months prior. I said that I recognized him and I told them everything that happened from the start of the year. The police officer sat me down and he then told me what happened. Apparently, the man had been sneaking into our room like multiple times throughout the year. The man had both mine and my roommate's schedule so that he could see when we would be in and out of the room. He also had placed micro cameras in the corners of the room. My roommate wasn't feeling well, so when she had left one of her classes early one day, she had returned to the room to find the man standing in it. She then freaked out and called the campus police. The police then searched his office and they found that he had stolen multiple things from my room. Things like my underwear, and he even stole my garbage. It was really weird. He also had like dozens of pictures of me and some even taken around campus and some extremely zoomed in on me in my room. The man also had a spare key to our room which he would use to get in and out of it. The man was obviously fired from his job. I'm not exactly sure what kind of legal action was taken, but the police assured me that I'd never see him again. 
I've always really wondered what his true intentions were, and what would have happened if my roommate hadn't caught him that day. I guess it's a good thing I never found out. A few years back, I was a shift manager for a local big box pharmacy and convenience store. It was right across my backyard and I could probably sprint there in under a minute if I really wanted to, so it really worked out for me. I was in my late 30s. I worked out quite a lot and while I was fit, I was still a smaller girl. Even though I was married, I would constantly get hit on and asked out. It was pretty flattering, but it always made me feel really awkward. Now, this particular store I worked at was in a really weird part of town. It was on the right side of town to attract the Karens, but close enough to the not-so-good side of town to attract the drug addicts, drunks, and psychopaths. Anyway, let me say that I'm not someone that gets scared easily. I've had someone high on meth crash their car into the side of the store, causing the back of our store to bend inward because we didn't carry pineapple juice. I had a man pick me up and throw me over his shoulder and start walking out the door with me, saying that I'd make a good wife. Yeah, that's one for another time. Anyways, it all started on a Sunday morning. I remember this because I was really busy building end caps and making cell signs. I was working with my favorite coworker, so the day was flying by and I was really bubbly this day. There was a man and his son that came into the store and they made a beeline for me. The man was probably just a little under six foot and he was skinny. The man had dreadlocks and a long skinny silver earring dangling from his ear. He also had this really tan trench coat that I found really odd because it was summer. Nonetheless though, I had then greeted them and asked if they needed some help. The man spoke with a really thick Jamaican accent and he said that his GPS stopped working and he wanted to see if we had any. I let out a really small laugh, thinking he was messing with me. Uh, no, that would be at Best Buy or something, but we do have a small section of electronics on this wall over here. I indicated the wall to the back of me. Oh, thanks, he said, taking a look but also keeping his eyes on me. Something about those eyes just really chilled me. He was speaking another language to his son, but I kept going on about my task for the day, and he would call me to help him asking me questions about chargers and SD cards. I answered them and then he started telling me how beautiful I was. Really awkwardly, I had thanked him. You must work out, yeah? He asked. Um, yeah, yoga mostly. I replied while getting more and more uncomfortable now. He made some more comments about my body telling me how he loved my tattoos and he was just really being a creep. I tried to stay polite though and eventually I just walked away to do some more work. I started to avoid him but he was still staring at me. The man had his phone out and I kept hearing the shuddering of a camera. I went to the office to tell my other coworker that I thought the guy was taking my picture and I was just really feeling uncomfortable. He then came out and watched over me. Shortly after my coworker came out, the man and his son then left. By the time the end of my shift came, I forgot about him. A few weeks later, I was up front ringing customers with a different coworker. We were crazy busy that day, but I was the manager on duty. After we got the line down, my coworker then handed me an envelope. Uh, what's this? I asked her. I don't know, some man in dreadlocks told me to give it to you, she said. I took the envelope and I went into my office with it. Inside of the envelope were dozens and dozens of pictures of me. My heart sank. I had no idea that these were taken. Most of them were of me in the store while working, some of me walking home, and some even with me and my daughter. I felt sick. There was also a note with it. It said something along the lines of, You're so beautiful. I'm in love with you. I'd be a much better husband than what you have now. Please give me a chance. There was more to it, but it's in police evidence now. The guy really stupidly left his name and address. I then called our store manager as well as the police. They took our camera footage, my statement, and the pictures and letter. They told him that he really needed to stay away from me or the next time he's getting arrested and he's banned from the store. 
I was really relieved but still really bothered by it. A few more weeks to about a month then went by. It was another really busy Sunday night. It was just myself as the manager on duty and we had another coworker as my cashier. We were ringing things up together when I noticed a man staring at me. The man was tall with a medium build. He had dreadlocks and he had the same earring and long trench coat as the other man did. This man was really scary. His eyes were just cold and really dead and angry. It felt like they were staring right through my soul. He didn't have anything to purchase, just stood and stared. I tried to smile politely at him, then another wave of customers came. I got lost in helping everyone, but didn't see the man anymore. Even when things calmed down, I still didn't see him. I decided to go start facing the back of the store, and I told my coworker to call me if she needed me. As I was back there, I heard that Jamaican accent and all over. I looked up at the mirror to see that same scary man on the phone. Yeah, she's here. No, it's just one other girl here with her. I can grab her when she leaves. No problem. I was absolutely horrified. He didn't see me, so I slowly made my way up to the front. I briefly tell my coworker what's going on and then call the police and store manager. The cops took him away. A few days later, a detective came to speak to me. The two men were brothers. They were abducting women and actually using them for human trafficking. He told me I was really lucky. I later found out that they had apparently found a woman beaten to death in their apartment. They've both since gone to prison. This still gives me really bad nightmares. What happened to that woman could have easily been me. But thank God it wasn't.